That's how I start today. What am I sharing? Now, I want to ask you guys, what do you understand by the church? I think Pastor Manuel said something earlier, or somebody said something earlier about the church, whatever. Yes. We are the church. We are the body. The we church is the just church. a building. We are the church. The, the body, body of Christ. Christ. Okay? We are the church, the body of Christ. What else do we know about the church? What else is said about the church? Or the belief of other people about the church? Because my next series, this and this is all going to be about the church. I want to take us back to basic and then bring us up. Okay? It's about the church. What else is said about the church? What have you heard about the church? Anyone? That we should not forsake the assembly of the gathering of yeah, the Yeah, we should not forsake church. the assembly of the gathering of the, of the saints. Yes, sir? I think I'm hearing... Uh, I, was, uh, I was going to say gathering of people of God. Gathering of people of God. Yes. Okay, the church is the gathering of people of God. Okay, so... Some people have said the church is a building. Mm -hmm. No? Place where they worship. It's just a building. We are the church. Mm -hmm. You and I are the church. Mm -hmm. If service starts at 9 o'clock and you are not here, a vital part of the church is absent. If you are entrusted to do a particular task and you're not there to do it, something is missing. Yet yeah, God will use somebody to do it, but may you not be replaced in the task allocated to you. I understand people come from far, but we have to program it. I know there's traffic, there's all that. But if you have a task in the church, you must be there. It's not that we're going to start organizing when we should have started service. And when there's Bible study, I like it. There's a lot of people there in Bible study. That is the kind of thing that we need to do in the church. Prayer service must not be known. Time of intercession must be regular. This is not a designation of one person. It's for all. All. It's not the job of uh, Pastor Emmanuel or, or Pastor Michael. I'm calling you Pastor now. I've already told Mama, every time I want to call you, I call a Pastor. So it looks like that's coming. I've told Mama already, if I haven't told you, I've told Mama. <laughs> uh, it looks like it's coming. But what I'm trying to say is that everybody needs to step into the role. Everyone has a role to do within the church. If you're not doing it, if you're in Russia, you're not there, it's missing. Okay? And when India comes for the blessing, may you not be found wanting or missing. Because the blessing of serving in the church comes from God, not from the human being. You don't look at the face of human being. They may do something to you, you may not like it, but it's not you, them you come to serve. That will happen anyway. You have not come to serve them. You have come to serve the Lord. Focus on the Lord. For the Lord. Even when nobody is looking. So, at times we believe that the church is a building or a particular denomination. But in reality, that church is the assembly or gathering of people of God with the sole purpose of what? Worshipping our Heavenly Father in true and in spirit. In true and in spirit. That, is, that area is very important. I can worship the Lord in many ways, but not if it's not in truth and in spirit. That worship is not acceptable to Him. It's not. I don't know. It looks like today is harsh, yeah? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just doing it. 
Yeah. I'm just going. Even the things I said earlier was not in my script. Okay. All right. The church is the family of God. And Ephesians 2, 14 to 18 says, emphasize the need to live in peace. The need to live in peace and unity with one another. Because a failure to do that, the world of separation will come in. But I pray that the world of separation now, that I've been operating before, may be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Every world that separates every member, one another, former, working together in peace and in unity, may that world be broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are brothers and sisters. And to each other, as the body of Christ, as you identify, with diversity of gifts, through the same Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. Diversity of gifts. So, what Pastor Manuel may be to do, I may not be to do it. What my minister there is able to do, I am not able to do it. What uh, Michael is able to do, I may not be able to do it. What my brother is here is able to do, I may not be able to do it. What uh, reference is able to do, I may not be able to do it. But when we all come together with our gift, there's an explosion of the Spirit of God. Amen. Because it's purpose that He gave everybody diversity of gifts. And we use it properly, not quenching any other one, not silencing any other one, you will find out that, that, that there is something to learn from one another. Amen. There is always something to learn from one another. If you see me, most of the time when I am there, I am making notes. It's not that what they are preaching is new, but it comes in a newer dimension. And I take note of it. And you must be ready to learn. Even people who have been preaching and they are 80 today, they are still learning. And you never know everything about God. You will learn till you go and answer the call. So, I am the deacon. I am the general overseer. I am that. It's all tied to First, you are a child of God. Amen. First, you are a child of God. Remember that. So you have no right to lord it over anyone. No right. If you've been doing it, stop it. Paul declares boldly. He says, Why is not ashamed of the gospel about Jesus Christ that he preaches among the world? This message is nothing, nothing less than the power of God. Paul is saying, I am not ashamed of the gospel. So you should not be ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You should be able to rise up there and preach the gospel, speak the word. It is not when you hold the mic. You are going out there. You are in your workplace. You can preach the word of God without even using the scripture, you just talk to them nicely. You are preaching. It's entering. It's entering. They may fight you. There will be the one that will fight you. But I want to assure you, the word of God that you are speaking will set you apart. Even if they don't like you or what you are saying, they know that this one is from God. May they be able to identify you as a child of God. Not somebody that claim I'm a Christian and wear the cap and wear the logo and everything. But their behavior in workplace is totally opposite. They will look at you and say, if that's what your God has been teaching you, I don't want to be part of it. So our behavior anywhere we are must mold them the word of God. It must. So, what's God's program for the church? Second Timothy four. Can you open that up, please? Second Timothy four, uh, one to five. 
if someone go there, you can read. What's God's program for the church? I charge you in the presence of God. Yes. And of Christ Jesus, who is judge, the living and the dead. And by his de- and by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebook, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. For having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myth. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work, and evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Hallelujah. Amen. In the word of God, we bless. You getting it? It says, charge you, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes? Who judges the living and the dead? Okay? But this first thing, preach the word. It's not saying hold the mic. Preach the word. Not hold the mic. Preach the word. That's the reason why I'm repeating it. Let somebody begin to fight to come and hold the mic. Preach the word means you can preach the word anywhere you go. Okay? And be ready in season and out of season. What does that mean? Continue to dive into the word of God. And whatever that you put in is what you get out. Anytime somebody calls you out, you are able to speak the word that you have been putting in. If you have garbage in, garbage out. If it is a word, the swearing word that you have been putting in, that's what's going to come out when somebody comes to you. When somebody gets really to your skin, what is inside will come out. And when people get in your sin, yes. They will even go deep into it, they will cut it too. Because why? God is here seeing them, but He's allowing that to happen to inspect you. Sometimes God allows Satan to do certain work to find out what's inside you. If somebody get right into your skin and you begin to curse, curse them and whatever, whatever, you see, your old man is coming out, and that old man needs to go. Amen. Tell yourself, the old man is going to go. And if you say old man, let the old man go. Let the let the old the whole image, let it disappear. Hallelujah. Let a new image, sign and seal by the Spirit of God, let it come in, let it manifest, let it stay in, let it manifest in me and in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. See, when you shake your response, people who wish to get in your skin, they will not get in your skin. Anymore. Amen. People will do something to me. Guys, I'm not that uh, uh, humble, though. <laughs> but when God humbles you, then you know how to say it. I'll be looking. But when it's time to speak, I will speak. But most of the time, when they are being uh, trying to get into my skin, I refuse. I refuse. Jesus did not say a word when they were persecuting him. Did he defend himself? No. So why do you think God cannot defend us? Sorry, I don't know what I was just saying. That's what God is doing. Okay. Uh, God wants to transform the church. Amen. And who are the church? We are the church. So it means God wants to transform us. Amen. <laughs> the likeness of his image. Now, the New Testament record of the early church reveals that the preaching should be at the heart of all church activity. 
The word of God should be given preeminence over any of our other activities. The word of God should be given preeminence over all other activities. Celebrating is good, dancing is good, all that, but it should not take the place of the word of God. So, the word of God should be the heart of all other activities, every church activities. Preaching the word in season, out of season, the preacher says, the word of God is to expose sin. Expose sin. That is what we mean by reproof. Expose sin. Reproof. When people are sinning now, they've been exposed. It gets what coming. They get annoyed. Why don't you keep quiet? Why don't you keep quiet, uh, Pastor? Why don't you keep quiet, Mama? Why do you keep quiet? When you are engaging in sin, a sin is a sin, and it's not only affecting you, it can affect the church too when sin spreads. So the word of God is for reproof. Uh, uh, I hope on. It's a call to repentance. That's what my by rebuke. A call to repentance. Rebuke. And to follow Christ as salt. All of the above must be done within the church. We should be able to obey instruction. Pay attention to details. What you do, if nobody sees it, God sees it. And God, to anoint you, if you've been praying for anointing, uh, this, power, whatever, God needs to see the old man go. The old woman go. Amen. Wherever it is, you need to go so that the new one can come in. Amen. So you have a new season. A new beginning, a new season, Amen. a new beginning, a new season, Amen. a new beginning. Amen. I speak that over your life. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We are going to deep, deep things, but uh, God is awesome. Let the one fight, let the one fight clear after this, so, because. Uh, I'm picking the word of God. Everyone <laughs> fight. Because if you fight me, then you means you are fighting God. And whatever you get from that, I will be your disciple. I'm not talking to anyone. I'm giving the word of God to mm -hmm. people. Okay? Paul one of a time when the four seizures will come. When people will no longer endure sound and healthy teaching, the Bible is the only word of God that can save. The Bible is the only word that can save. And you know they say it will sanctify you by the word. So all the layers of the old man or the old self begin to be shaved out. And when the old self is being shaved out, there's always a fight back, a cry. But at the end, the pain will be what? Because a new you will match. That the new you that can be used by the Holy Spirit. The new you that can we can contain the power of God. When God rests power on sin, it will crush the sinner. But when God's power rested on a plain vessel, the one that have been, that have been, that have been, uh, uh, that all of us worthy things have been removed from it, it will rest and you will rest well, and you will not kill them. 
Instead, you begin to develop them. You begin to see that new person in March. I pray that the Lord Himself will sanctify each and every one of us, Amen. including me, the preacher. I'm no exception, including my household. The word of God who sanctify us, who wash us, and who cleanse us by the blood. So that we can be a partaker of God's power. Anyone here that is under any form of bondage, that the Lord wants to deliver, I pray now. By the power that's in the blood of Jesus, uh, may you be sanctified now. May you be washed now. May you be cleansed now. Uh, may the new person come in. Uh, Amen. May the difference comes in. Uh, the difference by the word. Uh, it is not when uh, you fall down that you've been delivered. May the word uh, deliver your mind uh, and your mind uh, and your mindset uh, and the wholeness of your faculty. May the word wash the brain and every part of you that have been that have been contesting with the word of God. I said I pray for liberty, freedom, liberty, freedom, washed by the word, washed by the blood, washed by the word, washed by the blood. I release the fire of God against every contesting power, every power contesting your movement if you are guessing it. As a church, I said today, the fire of God is against everything that contests against your destiny. Where you begin to move forward, fight the fight, win the race, fight the fight, win the race. Because the revelation of John 11 says, you are already overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And so, stand in that position of victory. I have my victory. Okay, yes, you are attacking me. I have my victory. It's a beginning. I have already been, I've already had my victory because Jesus Christ has overcome every battle, every sin, every strategy of the enemy. I've been, I've been identified and been dislodged. They no longer operate in my life. And so, devil, I run you out of town. I run you out of the church. I run you out of my home. I run you out of my family. I run you out of every place. You have no place to stay because already you are in the lost battle. I am victorious. I am victorious. I have power. I have power. And the Lord has given me the authority to rebuke you. So I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. Get out. Get out. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 As we declare the word, so shall it be. Amen. Verse 5 of that word that we read. He said, But you be sober in all things. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. I pray for everyone here. Your ministry is already being identified by the Lord. Whether you know it or you don't know it, I pray for the spirit of recognition uh, that you be able to know exactly what you've been called to do. Uh, and I pray that you fulfill, you will fulfill, you will fulfill, you will fulfill your destiny. You will fulfill the ministry you've been called unto. You will not be your ministry will not be cut short. Uh, whatever that the Lord has called you, whether pastor, evangelist, apostle, whatever it is, uh, teacher. Fulfill it, fulfill it, fulfill it. Because in the place of fulfillment, uh, promotion comes in. Uh, begin to fulfill your destiny. Every agent uh, against your fulfillment uh, today, uh, when there is a fire of God against them, uh, we find their power, we destroy their work, uh, and we declare that you shall fulfill Amen. your destiny Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, it says, but in, in this, you have to be sober. In all things, you have to endure hardship. It is not the Lord that gives you hardship. Because Satan knew that you were about to enter into something. He's now going to bring an obstacle. If, oh, why me? Why not you? Did you not do it for Jesus? The Bible says, 
Jesus fasted for 40 days. Right? And night. He was led in the wilderness by the Spirit of God. But he was followed by who? Satan. Why did God allow it? And why Jesus was there praying to the Father? Let me use the example of how we do it. We go in there. Father, I'm coming to this pastor. I pray for empowerment. Shabaka Shakara Saka. Let go take a go shandia. Manika Ravasha. Let go secondaria. I hold the power. I hold the power. Everything that God has declared that will be here. I take it now. Anyone that's against me, I destroy the power. I buy them and destroy them. All that kind of thing. We do that. But Satan is in there. Say, wait. 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 He said they waited until he was 40 days now hungry. That signifies he waits until he find your weakness. He waits until he find your weaknesses. And once it's allocated and find it, that weaknesses, he will use it time and time and time and time and time again. That is why you find out that defeat after defeat and defeat after defeat. May you be removed from defeat from now on. Amen. I said be victorious in the name of Jesus. Be victorious in the name of Jesus. The point I'm making is that he waited for Jesus until the when is weak, when he's hungry. To show up to tempt him. Why do you think you'll be accepted? So, when you are moving higher, be ready for battle. And how do you get ready? Dive into the word of God. Pray. Pray that you never prayed before. I pray, I know this is time that you're fasting. The time of fasting. Let no word. The word that is not the fitting of God come out of your mouth. And if it doesn't come out of your mouth, let it not come into your heart. Because sometimes you bring it, you don't say it, but it's coming to you. It's coming to you. Because out of the abundance of the heart, you must speak it. So as you've seen it coming, rebuke it now. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Sir. So begin to let him know that you know that he's working negative thoughts in your heart, in your mind. Begin to rebuke it so that it will pack it back and go. And you can concentrate on the word of God and your prayer. Because if you hold malice, if you hold grudges, if you hold any of these things, the time of prayer and fasting is the time when you should be moving up, not going down. So let it be the time when you hold me into the word of God. Amen. Let it be the time that you forgive and you forget yeah. and never remember that you apply grace. Grace of God. Grace of God Amen. is needed. Because the people who want forgiveness, how to forgive others? Is that not the word of God? Amen. So he said, and you actually do the work of evangelists, fulfill the ministry. Paul is saying that it matters not what the rebellious goats masquerading as sheep think or say or do. But you, Timothy, but you, put your name on it, you, John, be sober. Meaning, continue to be sober. You've exercised patience, continue to exercise patience. You've endured hardship, continue to endure hardship. Exercise self control. Measure that and respond on a level head. Meaning, there are certain things the mind will trigger to you. Ah, who look at that person? They always do that to me. And whatever. It happens to the best of us, even me. But in the end, you have to learn to rebuke that thing, that thought. 
that thought. Uh, the thought, if you feed on it, uh, it will become like a stronghold. And when it becomes a stronghold, it's difficult to bring down. Bring down. So stop it because before it becomes a stronghold. Amen. Bring it down. Subject it to the word of God. Amen. Be sober. Be sober. Preach the word of God. Ah, it guarantees hardship. All those people that say to you, yes, I'm going there, yeah, I just read the word and whatever, nothing happened to them. Go and check what is the thing that's back in them. Because we are preaching the true word of God, you will receive hardship. Don't let anyone deceive you. If they deceive you today, I'm disabusing your mind. It's all about the church. Disabuse your mind. All right. So, I'm going to round up the session by looking at what uh, uh, Luke says. Uh, Luke, who wrote the, the, the book, he says, in God's early church go like this, and the word of God kept on spreading. May it be said, in church of God's grace, and the word of God kept on spreading. And the number of disciples continue to increase. In the number will need to increase greatly, both here and worldwide. Acts chapter 6 verse 7. And the word of the Lord continued to grow and be multiplied. Grow and be multiplied. Acts chapter 12 verse 4. Again, in Acts chapter 19 20. So the word of God was growing mightily and prevailing. May the word of God grow mightily and prevail in your life. May the word of God grow mightily and prevail in my life. May the word of God grow mightily and prevail in the life of my children. May the word of God grow and mightily and prevail in the life of our household, every member, and our family, in our ministry. May the word of God grow and prevail in the name of Jesus. I decree and I decline that the word Receive uh, a royal approval from above. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, Father, we thank you, Father. Lord. Yeah. Today we stop in this session. We thank you for what you have done. What are the words in the heart of the people? Uh, let it become, uh, let it fall into a good ground, uh, let it germinate, uh, let it bring forth great and mighty fruits yeah. and harvest upon harvest in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We pray. Amen. Amen.